Hi, I am here to explain how I am doing my simple LTN-like system for the using the new interrupt system, and it's all vanilla. Um, I mean the basic gist is I'll have a depot dedicated to a type of carbo, so in this or er, type of wagon, right? So in this case, this is the depot for the four wagon long uh, trains. It also contains technically the liquid one, but the way I'm passing the signals is this is the green signal. So technically I probably should have this as a separate depot, but I have it combined for reasons. And then I also have another depot for the one long trains. Uh, and my provider stations are literally require no circuit logic besides just like reading the storage. And then, so like this is a provider station, right? Uh, oh, this is 16,000. So I used to do limit two for this on the math for like how much I would set the number would be like 40 times the stack size. Or sorry, it'd be 40 because it's times four times the stack size like that. So this is all my provider station look like, literally just enable or disable if it's greater than 8,000. And then a requester station, let's see. So like say this coal one, this is for the military science, I believe. Oh, well, isn't this lovely balanced? Um, is literally gonna be the opposite. If the coal is less than 8,000, then I enable the station. Uh, you can also just configure it however you want. You can even, so I even have a parameterized blueprint for this, right? I. I could give the blueprints for this, but it's, it's really simple, let's, let's be honest. And it's literally just the parameter and the stack size times 160. And I do the same for like the one long trains too. Uh, when If you're doing this, uh, it's important that, so this is 200,000, which is enough for a four long liquid train, right? You wanna make sure you have more than 200,000 of storage so that's why for like the liquid trains, I'd be sure to have 400,000. Because if you're trying to look for, if you, the station is less than 200,000, you can only hold 200,000. Or greater than, if you're looking for greater than 200,000, you can only hold 200,000. The condition is never going to pass, right? Um, so then how does the depot work, right? So in the depot, I have a clock that cycles through the list of items I want. Or that I can like handle so in this case I have like coal iron copper and so on right and I increment the value one by one one by one right now why do I do this well I unlock I start doing trains when we do red and green science right and the easiest way I have found is to select each signal one by one is to run a clock so in this case it's like t less than U, so this is 10, and the reason this value is I'm just determining automatically, but all it really is supposed to represent is the total count of these. And then in the decider combinator, I check is the time equal to the like value, right? And if it is, I emit that value. So you can see here, it's just going through each one, one at a time in the list. Um, I also have this for liquids too. So in this, this is the green signal. Um, and now the actual like clock logic, I guess, for like how I determine like the upper bound. So in this case is 10. If you really wanted, you could literally just hard code this to be whatever value you want. Like you could have this be 100. I said, now let's go from a T to 100. But obviously that means the response time of selecting each one is gonna be a bit slower. So that's why I decided to do U, which is a value I am setting based off of literally just this. <laughs> I don't actually know how to count like what's the maximum value. So like I would, I would want it to go to uh, one to eight, but all I'm doing is just counting the values, which does mean that you always want to make sure you have at least plus one of the that, like a liquid and an item here, or you can just set a dummy item at the end. I don't know, like this and then remove the your the liquid constant combinator
Otherwise, you're going to have like an off by one error. Um, each of these stations are called depot, and they have train limit one. And I'm sending like the red signal, which is the one iterating through one by one, right? Um, so that is the depot, and that's the this is the same thing basically, and set it for my one long items. Uh, before I go into the interrupts, I do want to say that this does work for like two long trains, or sorry, train limit two, and whoa okay so we can see here this train stuck so this does the system does have a problem right so let's say we have train limit two for not the requester but let's say the provider right or let's say for iron we have this station here that has train limit two when this station opens and it has a train limit let's say one it's going to send two provider trains to this station and then they'll go to the requester but what can happen in the meantime is this station will get disabled um, after like, because it only really needed one train full of cargo, right? And so then you end up having something like this, where the, let's make this one too, where the train is stuck here. So my solution for this is I, I really need these uh, pr provider stations. Well, this is a provider. I really need these provider stations empty, right? And the reason why is I later want to create a train like this that goes to provider stations like available provider stations and just like fills it up sushi style right um i will go through the circuit so this circuit is very simple by the way this is just a bunch of negative signals so i want 50 of each and then i'm going to randomly select them and i'm reading from the train and sending to the train and then the actual condition for like the sushi train is literally if the circuit's less than zero, that station's not full, go to that station. And it's good to have set um, the past for a sushi train, because if you don't, what's going to happen is a train could just receive a slow trickle of items very slowly. I mean, I guess you could just reduce the inactivity to like one second. That's another thing you can do. But, and this is my refueling. I specifically say the coal is less than 25, I go to my refueling station. Uh, okay, so going to the actual interrupt system, I'll also sh fix my one long train to show you how to fix this. So we're going to have a group for the four long trains, and then also we're going to have a group for the liquid four long trains. And they're going to sh share the same uh, interrupt or depot service. And they also will head to their respective depot, like in this case, it's the four long depot. Um, in the interrupt, what we want to do is we want to check if the passive station is not full and the requester station is not full and we have empty cargo. So if these, if this is true, that means we have an empty train ready to like fulfill a request, right? And so then we're going to go to the provider station and fill and then an em a requester station and an empty, right? Now, if you want, what you can do is you can add another condition. You can say circuit condition, I don't know, check mark is greater than zero. And you do or. And then at your at your provider station, you could put down a, a something that like reads the contents. So like it could be something like this. If you read the content of the train and if you see, let's say, I don't know, greater than 50 red science, you send back a check mark to the station and then the train will leave. Um, I, don't, I haven't done that because right now filling is all I really need. So I don't really need that. So that's just the filling up. Now the hard part is is figuring out, okay, I really don't want this uh, train to sit here. Like Maybe this is fine for you. Um, right now for my one long trains, it's fine for me. But eventually it's not going to be fine where... I'm, let's say for my mall. So I have a mall right here where I have, look at how many stations this is. This is like 19 different stations. Okay, maybe it's not 19. Um, and I want to have a sushi train that like picks up items that my mall needs, right? Rather than doing this really long system. Um, then I need this uh, steel tr station to be empty. And it's not because there's a train waiting for a, a request to be available. So... 
to do that, we have a new condition that you need to make this interrupts very specific to the like group, right? So we know that if a train's stuck here, it has cargo in its inventory, um, it has no path, the requester is full, and we're currently at a provider. And instead of using the circuit wildcard, we're using the item wildcard. Now this wildcard right here is very tricky because it's going to read the contents of your train. Um, so you don't need to send any circuit to it, but the reason why that's important to know is that this is why I don't use the item wildcard in my trains, because if you have an empty train, what is it going to send? That's right, nothing. So for these full trains, what I do then is I send it to the depot, and then I say, hey, now go to the requester like that. So for the most part, it should not... It should take from this depot first whenever like a requester station is ready to like pull from, right? As you can see here. But what it can do or what it might do is, so that copper is being fulfilled. I think this is, oh no, it's not going to copper. Okay, so it didn't do it. What I was worried about it would do is it would send another copper train to go fill up copper, but it didn't. Instead it just sent that copper train. And I believe the reason why is because we're checking if both of these are not full. Now, that's kind of it, actually. Like, that, that is the entire system. Now, you may be wondering, why do we need a clock here for this? Couldn't we just send the constant combinator of, like, all the items we want to the trains? Now, for some reason, that seems great. But what can happen is this condition fulfills, okay, our provider station iron is not full. And then the next thing it'll do is it'll reevaluate until it'll keep evaluating this requester thing until it's like let's say copper ore is not full right so then now all of a sudden we're sending a train for like no reason um it will still work like this will replace of iron provider and then iron requester but then you just keep sending trains over and over and over because the you're sending a list of items and it's being evaluated differently um, if you want, I could, actually I could do this right now. I'll do this just to demonstrate. You could actually switch with a, a selector combinator. So let me go to there. And know how very simple the system is too, right? Like, I understand there's a problem where it sends too many trains and that's an issue. But like, I still have trains. It's not really that big of an issue. Um, I can really just add more trains if I need to. Like, this is still kind of a small amount of trains, in my opinion, compared to what you'd regularly need with a base like this. Like, I'm doing 180 SPM right now. Um, so then what I can do is, if you, once you get to blue science, uh, I need two of these. What? Oh, there we go. So what I can do instead of this clock system, so I can break this. I can say, he's connected, red, I don't know, also red, and then I like to, where is it, green, green, and then rather than select, let me just do random input and random input. And it's basically the same thing we had before, right? So once you unlock the selector, you can do that. We don't need that. Um, if you want, I'll, I'll I'll be sure to put the the this circuit in the description, uh, or you can just copy what I did. Um, and one other thing is, whenever you add a new item to the system, you do need to update the constant combinator, which is kind of annoying, but. A note that I don't have any setup at my stations, right? So that's kind of the trade-off there. You don't need anything else at your stations. So I think that's a fair trade-off, and it's not really a big deal to remember to update a constant combinator. I mean, it kind of is, but like if you really wanted, nowadays radars they send global signals, so you could have, and then so like just to demonstrate that, right? 
as we can see here, this is like going through randomly. So what you really could do is you could gather all of the stations like you'd still probably need a constant combinator at the station. But anyway, that's not the point of this tutorial. The point is is we have no global system and this just works. Like as you can see, the trains are going and stopping and it just works. So uh, yeah, I hope that was helpful for some, uh, anyone. Um, if there's any other questions, I can try answering them in the comments and I'll be sure to up add my blueprint for the selecting the depot, the item in the depot. So yeah, thank you.